Well, people with bad credit, they can't get credit, and that's mucking up the Fed's p plan really to revive the economy. John Hilsenrath joins us now to talk about that. John, tell us, what's the problem? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the, the problem is that we have a two-tier economy. You know, politicians like to talk about rich versus poor and wealthy versus everybody else. The two tiers that I'm looking at is people who have access to credit and people who don't have access to credit. You know, there's millions of Americans with low credit scores for a variety of reasons who aren't able to refinance, aren't able to take out new mortgages, uh, aren't enjoying the low interest rates that the Fed has engineered, and, and that's getting in the way of their efforts to get the economy going. And one reason you mentioned, of course, in your story is that we're talking really about, I guess, what economists like to call the marginal propensity to consume. In other words, oh, good. I, if I'm, you know, my editors wouldn't let me use that term in, the, in this story. I'm, you're, I remember you're bringing something. the show to a much higher level. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm doing my best. <laughs> but, but, in a, but in a sense, right, if we give stimulus, if we give credit to people that don't have money, they're more likely to spend it. That, that's the point, right? right? If, you know, if, if, you, if you have a high income, if, you, if you're very wealthy, you know, if, if you have easy access to credit, you're probably not someone who's going to spend that extra dollar because you're already spending as much as you want to spend. You know, people who are living on the edge are more likely to spend the extra dollar that, that they take out, uh, and they're not able to get it right now. Uh, you know, these are people who need to smooth out their earnings over time because, you know, they're living so close to the edge. They're not spending it, and again, that's something that's holding back the recovery. You know, there's also things like first-time home buyers. If you don't have, a, basically, if you don't have a credit score over 700 right now, then it's very hard to take out a new mortgage. Yeah, we, we have a chart. Some by, by the way, let me let me jump in there. We have a chart we're showing to people right now that's from your story that basically shows that people with a high credit score are the ones that are able to get mortgages. Um, my question. So la last year, 90% 90, 90 of all new mortgages that got written went to people with credit scores above 700. If your credit score was below 700, then you just weren't getting it. Now, there's two ways to look at this. One is, you know, and I'm getting emails from readers saying, hey, you know, people with bad credit shouldn't be getting more credit. So this is actually returning to the way things ought to be. That's a fair point, but it can only be taken so far because, you know, there are a lot of people out there right now who... For instance, they bought a home 2005, 2006, home prices just collapsed out from under them. They could use a little bit of relief and they can't even refinance the mortgages, the debt that they already have. I've got a question about, for the Fed, I mean, really, we talk about, I mean, what, what has the Fed learned is my question. If, if they really want to get more credit into the economy, I mean, it's, it's really a blunt instrument. And every time the economy has a bit of a hiccup, they put more credit into it. Isn't this a sign that really we're tapped out? We've gotten to the zero bound. We can't lower interest rates anymore. People really can't, in the aggregate, borrow more. The economy can't support more credit. I mean, isn't that an indication yeah. that this, is, this, this method of trying to fix the economy has kind of, it can't work anymore? Well, so, I mean, so there are two issues for the Fed. The first one is when they try, and they're, they're talking about this as we speak, uh, when they try to decide whether to do more uh, to benefit, the, to, to goose the economy, they always talk about costs and benefits. What are the benefits of doing more? And this credit divide that we're talking about tells them that the benefits are less than they would have hoped or less than they would have expected a couple of years ago. But that's not to say that there are no benefits. You know, they are also lowering credit costs for companies. They are, uh, you know, getting money into the hands of some households who are spending more. So it's not like the, the benefits are zero. They're just not as great as they otherwise would be. Great. The, and, other and factor, the other factor for the Fed is that, you know, it's pushed them into a little bit more of a political realm because they've been actually lobbying, they hate that word, Congress and the White House, to do more to clean up this credit channel, to do, to do more to fix the housing problem, to help, in, in other words, uh, people get out from uh, under these underwater mortgages. You know, they're trying to get other people to unclog the credit channels that's impeding their policies. And it's put them in some uncomfortable positions of being scolded, for instance, by Republicans in Congress to stay out of their business.